This Three Beards Media podcast may contain mature themes and may not be suitable for all audiences. I'm in the mood today. What's up, everybody? <laughs> what up? What up? What up, man? Huh? Hey, you're always laughing at me. I mean, because I'd rather laugh, man. It's good. Laughter is good for the soul, dog. I mean, we yeah. have to. Um, after this weekend, mm-hmm. we got to. Um, yeah. you know what, everybody? I uh okay, first of all, welcome to Side of the Storm. Brent Curvey, Marcus Pfizer, George Trice here. Um I didn't watch the game. Um, right, right. I was out there with Prime. I was out there with Prime. Prime. So I went to that Colorado <laughs> Nebraska game Saturday. That shit was wild. I bet. Sold out. I had row two seats. Mm. Now, if they y'all they, they look pretty damn row good. Row they look pretty good. I saw you. I they look pretty two. good. But you know they how I got row good. two? They was one in eleven last year. That's how I got row two. Um, I bought them before prime got picked up. So we had this planned a year ago. So every year I pick one big game. So I pay regular price for my tickets, whereas everybody else paid thousands of dollars. Mm, I probably would, I, I probably would have sold those. Boy, what? So would have. So would have. I almost could smell the bull, the the, the buffalo shit almost. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the today. All right, Todd and Brett. Uh, so we got a jam. We got a a, a, a star studded cast today. Like, uh, so I missed a lot of text messages over the weekend because I saw like I had eighty seven mixed texts from all the groups I was in, talking about the Iowa State game, talking about who he's gonna have on Monday. Um, but we do have two of our two thousand seven stars of the games: Todd Blythe, Brett Meyer, joining us live. Welcome, fellas, to Side of Storm. Hey, thanks for having us, welcome, man. It's going to be fun. Welcome. I'm excited. Thanks for having us. I wish no you would have referenced Last a different year than Brent. 2007. We, we weren't very good in 2007. Yeah, we weren't <laughs> stars that year. <laughs> <laughs> Bums of 2007. 2005. You know why? We'll, we'll run you it back a couple of years. Okay. Kermay <laughs> left, left, left in 2006. That's why we, you know, that's why we had a down year. You know, we lost. <laughs> yeah. That's like so the reason why. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't yeah. the reason why. <laughs> Ty, what you got in your in your glass? Because we always talk about what we drinking. Brett, Brent got uh, the, uh, this. Revelton. This is a little uh, High West Campfire Bourbon is what I'm rolling with tonight. Ooh. Just bought a bottle. I need I need okay. it all though. After this, uh, after the game on Saturday, I need everything I got. Me. I, we found a bottle. We were at the largest liquor store in Denver called Dave Co or something like that, Davo or something like that, and found one bottle of Campfire there. And um, going to the BYU game, and we're going to go into Park City and actually go to the distillery and hope they get it because they're now bringing it back. So oh, um, it should awesome. be coming back yeah. out this, uh, this fall. So we're going to stop by and get a couple bottles of the distillery before we head into the Provo because you can't find it in Provo. Um, no, we'll, we'll, we'll have, <laughs> can't find anything in Provo. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave that there. Um, <laughs> Brett, last time I saw you, you had your, you had more hair. I, I can tell you ain't got as much hair on your head. You cut it all off. No, nah, we strong. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, yeah, I'm nice strong. Nice strong. Nice strong. Get it. Nice strong. Nice strong. <laughs> running back. <laughs> 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 you had less hair than 
<laughs> Come on, I ain't. I mean, I ain't on that level today. Nah. I'm just, I'm just regular weed. I mean, you look at Curvey talking, but his mind might be moving me. Got the Jerry Rice dreads going, and you good? It's cool. Nah, you just mad because you can't grow your head as long no more. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Marcus, take that off. <laughs> I've been, I, I've been there since 19. Chill out. Chill out. <laughs> Yeah, I got him a nice hair piece looking like, yeah, that's, that's not real. I'm trying to give you some alternatives so, going on here. <laughs> but we got to ask, Marcus, because you came on online right away in a whole new setup. Look like you in a whole, like you in a professional setting, like you in the studio, but you ain't have oh, to work or worry about no kids taking your stuff today. This is Vegas. You know how we got Area 51 real close, so undisclosed locations. Tell nobody. Got yeah. down, down <laughs> the bunker. I had to pack up all my stuff together and put it in a bag and, and, and leave the house for so I can be on time. So there it is. <laughs> so that's what it takes. Every week there's something. His kids take his microphone, <laughs> his headphones. The one time was he, some his kids slid that little cover on a laptop over the camera. <laughs> right. So, that was a whole right. big one. That was, man. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was so, bad. You know, I thought there was something wrong with the camera, but it was a, like the little piece, I guess, like the privacy, you know, to cover your camera or whatever. There's a new laptop. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. That's <laughs> all. That's up. So exciting weekend. So again, we're sponsored by Revelton. We'll get to that in a little bit, but we're recapping our last week, uh, Iowa, Iowa State, Cyhawk game, um, and then mm. we'll preview uh, OU. Ty, Ty's already shaking his head. So so, I mean, I'm going to let y'all introduce yourself. I'm not going to go for y'all accolades. Y'all can say whatever accolades y'all want to say. Introduce, reintroduce yourself to our fan base. Our fan base is growing. We got about five, 600 people that look at us loyalty. Um, I was trying to see if Denny Ryan was on here because I owe him a shirt. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be on here in a little bit. But, Todd, we'll let it. We'll let you kick it off. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. And, you know, you know, let us know where you're at, what you're doing right now these days. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, I mean, not a whole lot of accolades to talk about, unfortunately, you know, a long time ago. But uh, receiver for the Cyclones from 04 through 07, got to play for uh, for our guy, Coach Dan McCarney, for three years and then uh, had a <clears throat> Gene Chiswick for our, for our senior year, for our last year. But um, no, nah, man, just, uh, just a Cyclone fan now. That's all that is. Well, you coughed in there between that. But <laughs> For some uh, forgettable senior year. I got you. In some respects, I'll say that. Yeah, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Well, welcome to the show, Brett. Yeah, appreciate QB, it. QB, what up? George, how we doing? Um, oh, man. I mean, I was there same time Todd was. It's kind of crazy because it was – we arrived on campus, Curve, myself, and Todd 20 years ago, class of 2003, wow. so – I'm sure Marcus, George, y'all know how much time flies because you felt like you felt like he was there, and here we are, 20 years later, three kids I'm later. I'm 20. I'm 25 years later. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Was, yeah, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, we're just. I'm living up in Minneapolis now, raising a family. So got three kids, and that's about it. Kids, work. Wake them up, put them to sleep, feed them. That's about it, man. Watch a little bad football on the weekends. That's the that's the routine. <laughs> yeah, I got a five and a ten year old. We all, all of us on here, got some kids. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we we living that up. But uh, so y'all y'all haven't hit forty yet, have you? One one of y'all birthdays was recently. Did you Brett, did you just hit forty? <laughs> No, uh, we're 38. Yeah, so we're 38, all 38. I mean, Brett, Brett kind of looks yeah. that way, but no, just, no, just okay. 38. I want to call them old. Why you call them old, man? See y'all. See y'all. Not supposed to do the banter yet. We ain't got to that point of the show. Oh, uh, the sorry, banter. sorry, sorry. It never stops with them. Just start Definitely. changing y'all names underneath y'all name. I just give random nicknames because I like to make my own up. <laughs> so I just start changing people's names. So, Brett, <laughs> what, <laughs> hey, what's up with you, man? Oh man, nothing. Just uh came off a big win. Easy win out in Sioux City. 42 okay. 42 shit. Good old shutout. Uh nice, nice. That's it, man. Slanging some collages here and there. Same old same okay. old man. Marcus Jr., how you doing? What you up to? Same old, same old. I mean, Junior's doing good. He's still down there in Phoenix, down there in the area of you. Uh you yep. know, training, get ready for the season. He's playing in it uh overtime elite league, so He's getting ready for that year. 
I mean, the other kids are just, you know, trying to duck and dodge this COVID, <laughs> you know, is trying to stay healthy as possible and, you know, just yeah. make sure that the family is safe as possible in this, in this crazy world we live in. No doubt. I got the game on in the back here for New York clones. So if y'all can't tell, I'm kind of stalling and I'm kind of like just being random because I don't really want to talk about the game um, hmm. just because we lost. Not that it was a horrible showing, just because we lost. Um, don't ever like to talk about a loss because we all – so, Ty, Brett, we all picked uh, the Cyclones to win the first three games, you know, and, you know, we failed at that right now. So we we are one and one, and one right now. Uh, we got OU this weekend. But, you know, it's always it always sucks when you lose um, a game at home, especially when it's Iowa. And, you know, because – I feel like sometimes in the past, when we lose the game, we have a decent season. Like we'll beat a number two team and beat another mm-hmm. three team. We don't really go anywhere. I also feel like when we when we do beat Iowa, Iowa goes on and they're like ten and two. So it's kind of like because they won, they're 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 not going to be as good the rest of the year. They 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 wore everything out for this game because normally that's what happens. They win this game. And then they kind of fizzle off. But then we beat them. They ended up like 10 and 2. So it was just, you know, it was some, some takeaways from the game. Um, you know, again, being down some of our starters. Uh, but it just, I just, from what the highlights I saw on the news and everything like that, just wasn't a clean game. Um, you know, we had some, we had some hiccups, you know, a turnover here and there, uh, block field goal. Um, you know, just, just some, just sloppy. What do y'all, what did y'all think of it? Same old story. I mean, kind of the same things that, that, Plague us when we do lose this ball game is is you know came up again uh, a key turnover um, obviously with with Iowa's team you can't if you turn the ball over you don't have a very good chance to win their their offense is nothing to write home about but their defense is really solid some errors in special teams and you know here we are another loss to Iowa so that's I feel like we've all seen this movie several times now but it's uh, you know hopefully you're right where we'll turn this around we'll we'll head on and have a good season and they'll you know I hope kind of spiral off. They play in the Big Ten West, so I don't really think that'll happen because it's just a bad league. But um, you know, it protects them from uh, from losing too many ball games. Uh, but unfortunately, it was kind of the same old same old on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Iowa plays. I think Penn State's the only ranked team they're going to play the rest of the year. So, I mean, that that has a lot to do with kind of the um, the directions of our seasons, right? When you know we play Texas is going to be. They're kind of the Texas that we saw, right? With four stars, five stars, elite players all over the field. Play Oklahoma. You know, we, we got a tough schedule ahead, and they don't. So, but uh, yeah, to Todd's point, you know, I was at the game. It was a great energy, and then kind of when that block kick happened, it seemed to hold on, Brad. You were, a little you were bit. at the game. You were you were in town? Oh, okay. You just okay. You can't call anybody. Call you. You I, 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 I was looking for Kerbe on the sideline. Oh, he ain't, he ain't see me either. He ain't say <laughs> me either. I had to hear from somebody else. Yeah, oh, <laughs> they, you oh, what? got him on the show today. They didn't even let you know they was in town. That's how it goes. In and out. In and out. In and out. Roommate, huh, Kerbe? Roommate. That's how it go. Everybody, nobody calls me. Nobody calls me. George does the same thing. Hold on. Hey, I was about to mute you because I knew you was going to do it. Yeah, I mean, it just goes across the board. That's how it goes. I got, I be having, like, I be in and out, like you said, Brad. I be in and out. I'm in there for something, and I be like, hey, Curve, I'm gonna come see you. And the one time I did come see him, I went to the store, he wasn't there. So I did come through on one. He's delegating. I like it. See, you know, he's rejecting everything. You know what? Hey, I'm gonna be in town for the Oklahoma State game next weekend. Where are you gonna be at? I'll be at the shop. It's my weekend to work. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna promise to see you. All right. Well, you said it on. It's on. It's live right now. So <laughs> live right now. anybody else watching, they can. They'll it's tell on tape. You. He's he been saying it live. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. You got you're a home right. game Friday night. Uh, we're not far. I think we played Johnston. Uh, yeah, we'll be down the street at Johnston. All right, then I might even just come to the game then. Come to the game. Heckle, you're going to be in the front row. Heckle, you're going to be in the front row. Hey, can I, I didn't curve. I got a question for you. So, obviously, your son's getting recruited right now. Mm. When, like, Iowa State coaches or any, like, what are they selling to him? Like, when they talk about, like, why you should come to Iowa State? I, I think because he's been around for so long, it's more of a, you know, you belong here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, as I know, maybe a week or two ago, Campbell was like, what the fuck? You didn't say nothing to me? 
Like, I guess we were there for like a couple minutes too long and he didn't say anything to him or something. Just kind of letting Campbell do his thing. And so I think the expectation is they treat him like family, you know what I'm saying? Cause he's kind of been around it. And, you know, my advice was to, to any of them, like, make sure you treat them like you want them. Cause don't think he's going to come just cause I went there. Like that's a, yeah. that's a him. That's, that's a, his good. decision. Not mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. What Iowa State does, you know, he can fit their scheme uh, just fine. But it's he's got to, you know, got to feel that from those coaches because I, I don't have four years to do anywhere else. My eligibility yeah. is up, so he's got to <laughs> serve our time. Forever. That's it, man. Yeah. That's over with. How many, how many offers are we up to? We're four. We got four. KU, Kansas State, Iowa State, and Mizzou. So. Mm, tough. What's up? Yeah. Okay. okay. Brett, where are you living at now? Are you in Iowa or where are you at? No, we're in Minneapolis. We live in, in the West suburbs. Yeah, like Maple Grove area. So, All right. Yeah. Todd, you in Iowa still? Yeah, we're over in uh, Polk City. Um, okay. Just, yeah, just outside Des Moines there. Yeah, okay. That's what's up. Um, yeah, so I look at, and I was looking at, this. you talk about, I think you said it, Todd, the same old story. And we start this uh, this this loss right here, and it's like a touchdown. And it's starting that same trend where we don't lose by more than a touchdown. Right. You know, our our defense, we typically uh, we typically been running. I think I don't know if it's been all seven years that Matt's been there, but it's three the three three five is pretty much what he runs from that. I don't know if I mean that's been pretty much been the the thing, and it's helped us. You know, even when losing like a Will McDonald, you know, out here playing on TV, um, you know. But what do we need to do to strengthen up this defense for one? Because yeah, we did give up some things. Um, you know, three three five has been working for us. When the losses that we've had, we've kept it close um, within that score. I want to talk about defense first before we we can all talk all day about the offense. But what do we need to do? What do you all want to see on that defense? Because both of y'all are offensive players. You know, to help you out when you was out there as an offensive player, what would you want to see this D doing? I think they're. I think our defense is okay. I think what we have to do is like Iowa wins games because their defense scores and they get turnovers. Because our offense last year was ranked towards the bottom. We're ranked towards the bottom beginning to start this year. And I mean, I, we're going to have to have our defense score points or, or get turnovers and get us get us field position because we're, we're we the way our coaches want to play. Like Matt Campbell wants to coach a lot like Kirk Kirk Ferentz does. Everything's in front of you on defense. You're sound on defense. Your special teams are good. And offensively, it's just kind of there to play complimentary football. We're not going to be explosive. We lost our quarterback. You know, we're just – we're going to have to play that way. And, you know, Iowa wins because they get turnovers and points on defense. So I would just say, like, the way our team's built right now and where we are offensively, we're going to have to get more out of our defense from, like, a turnover perspective or whether it's just turning them over, taking possessions away, getting us field position, or – scoring on defense Mm -hmm. i feel like we're not off to a bad start as far as that goes though i mean we have i mean i think cooper has three picks i mean one of them one of them he took back yeah Uh, i mean there's been plenty of years we where we get to week two three and we don't have a turnover yet um i I don't know Mm -hmm. if we have a fumble recovery uh curve you can help me out on that i think it's i think it's just the three picks i think it's just the picks i don't think we've had any yeah but but still not not a terrible start as far as uh three picks and one of them for a tud but Special teams, I think, you know, kind of piggybacks off defense. We have to get something out of that unit. And, mm-hmm. and traditionally, the past few years, we haven't. And that's kind of, you know, reared its, its ugly head again this year um, already with special teams mishaps. So, uh, and not just mistakes, but also just we don't ever really get anything out of the, the return game, um, whether it's mm-hmm. just getting nothing out of a return or letting the ball bounce, which happened a couple times this week, mm-hmm. uh, and we lose an additional 10 yards of field position. Yeah. Um, I think we just have to we have to get something out of that unit, and it can't be just a um, it can't be a negative all the time, or or even really a push. It's got to be a positive for us if we want to have a chance. Because again, strength of our team is going to be defense, and offense is going to be probably a little bit of a liability all year. So we got to make up for it other places. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I was uh, I was watching the um, actually as I was preparing for the pod, I actually watched uh, OU's coach. Um, you know, talk about the press conference after their game last week uh, or this past weekend and talking about coming to us and, um, you know, worry about the defense because we put up 43 on them last year. Um, I think it was, I don't know if it was 43 0 or I don't know if they scored. Did they score last year or was it a flag field goal or something yeah. like that? Yeah, I think it, yeah, it, was, was, it was. It wasn't a lot, but you know, we, we put 43 up on them. 
you know, so we're not going to have that offensive weapon. So we still got to rely on our defense like we did um, in that game last year, because again, and like they say on any given Sunday for, you know, NFL, any given Saturday, you know, the team that comes out prepared to do it um, can, can win. And so, Oh, you is, you know, I'm from Ohio and, and Athens has always been a, a good place to go watch a game and be at a game. And their their fan base is pretty good out there too. So it's going to be noisy there um, for the small, small fan base they have there. So, you know, getting prepared for that game, getting this out of our rear view. I mean, it's again, it's the same old story. We haven't won back to back. Y'all were playing, I think, last time we ran, but we won back to back against Iowa, right? Uh, no, we, no won, we, we, we won, won like every, we won other, every other one. We were there. Every yeah, other? We, we won at home and lost on the road. Okay. I don't know when the last, I don't know when the last time we won back to back. I'm going to have to look at that stat at our next commercial break, but um, it's yeah, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. You know, it'd be nice to have that back to back. But again, didn't lose by much. Had had some opportunities. Um, throwing on throwing on third down for one yard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, new new OC like, and, and same story. Shallow cross on third and nine. It's, it's just, you know, I think I was sitting there and I'm watching like, damn, another quick out. Boom, there's a slant. He goes straight to the ground. I'm like, now, nah, look, we can nickel and dime down the field. Cool. However, if a mistake happens or we got to punt this ball, now we lost that drive for nothing. Like it's we didn't take any shots. I don't think we took enough shots. I don't know you, Todd. You and Brett can kind of let me know. know. If I'm I was, tripping I was, enough, I was but... watching the game just with some buddies, and, and we were talking about that, and they were saying, "Well, we haven't thrown the ball deep yet." I mean, we were having trouble getting the ball out on three steps. So I don't know what we were going to do, you know, with a longer drop. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but what frustrated me was one the down and distance throwing shallow cross, just like last year. We just swapped out Xavier Hutchinson for uh, for Jalen Knoll, but. Um, and, and expecting the guy to catch it two yards and, and run for another seven. Right. That's that's tough to right. do, you know, third down after third down. Right. And yeah, and, and the other thing was we kept trying to throw outs from the opposite hash. That's the one that got picked for a touchdown, and we just yeah. kept throwing it. And we were yeah, close to throwing it. a couple more, and we got away with it. Um, yeah. and, and I don't mean completions. We just got away with it as far as we didn't throw a pick. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's the kind of stuff that – and, Brett, you'd know more about, you know, quarterback play and all that stuff than, than any of us probably. But – it's, uh, I mean, that's the stuff that just leaves you scratching your head. Like, what? I mean, what is our plan right now? I'm sure we'll get to the fourth quarter clock management later on, but just as far as play calling, just, you know, on schedule stuff early in the game seemed, you know, yeah, as just, again, just the fan, frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I think offensively, like, they're going to, like, if you watch Iowa play, I don't watch a lot of their games, but it doesn't happen very often where they get beat deep. Mm-hmm. Like they're always going to be two high safeties, middle open. They're going to play a lot of cover four, which just means like mm-hmm. everybody has like one quarter of the field and they just back pedal. Mm-hmm. And what's going to be open in, in, in those coverages are are kind of the flats. I think we just kind of ran what we got. You know, Rocco's young. It's just second start, right? I mean, second start against Iowa's defense in that game and it's packed house and kind of energy. So you want to make sure you manage that game and, you know, like to your point, Todd, the picks, if it weren't for the pick six, like it, we're right in the game. Yeah. We're right there. Even even after all that, we're down seven, what, 17, nothing. And we still had a chance to, you know, to, it would have taken a lot, but we had a chance. So um, mm-hmm. I think, again, Matt Campbell wants to play the type of game where you just manage it and then you have a chance to win late. And hopefully you don't make those mistakes. And they didn't make any because they got a veteran quarterback. And, you know, we got a young guy and he made it. He made a mistake. What would you what would you tell him right now, Brett? You know, what what would you what would you be saying to him in this situation? You know, losing this game for a second start, knowing a lot's on you because we have lost so much for, for the season. What would you what would be your advice to this kid? You know? Yeah, I mean, I think there, there's gonna be a I mean, he's his dad played in the league for I think 10 years, so right. there's probably not right. gonna be a better so he, and there's not anybody on the program that can give him better, you know, better information. Um, but I would just say there's gonna be ups and downs, and you gotta learn from it. Like, you just know you can't throw that ball. Like, if yeah. you can't see it, don't throw it kind of a thing. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just – you're gonna there's going to be ups and downs. You bounce back great. You gave us a chance to win. You threw uh, – I think on the first possession, that same receiver had a chance to catch a touchdown and dropped it. And mm-hmm. then we came back mm-hmm. to him another one. Because when you get down in the goal line, Todd, you know this. They run their seven across. They run the same defense for literally 20 years. They run that seven across, and you're going to get – Seven guys toes on the goal line gonna get, all the way across. Yeah, you're going to yep. get man-to-man. So you either have somebody in the slot when the slot fade like we scored on, and I think it was 
the game in 06 or you run a fade with the guy on the outside and we had one on one. We went after the other corner that's not number three, who's like the first round guy and, you know, it was an easy pitch and catch. So uh, I think he played fine. It's just that one play was against mm-hmm. Iowa in a game like this. You just can't make that mistake. But I would just mm-hmm. bounce back. You're a guy. And I think his teammates are going to rally behind him. And I think he'll be just fine. Yeah. One thing I think that uh, I've noticed about Iowa, and as much as I hate to give them a compliment, is they, they take advantage of their opportunities. If they get a chance for a pick and a big play, they capitalize. Um, you don't see a lot of dropped interceptions on their defense. Um, I mean, they, you know, they have great athletes just like anybody else in the back end and across their defense, but they seem to always make the play when it's available versus a, you know, a tip ball that could have been a pick or a dropped interception, something like that. They are very opportunistic on, on defense. I think that's probably just kind of their, their culture and what's expected. And so that's what they believe and that's what they expect to get. And it's proven to happen, you know, Saturday after Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, Last Wednesday, um, they tried to do a, a collaboration. Old Man Strength tried to bring in Three Beers Mirror, brought in all the all the shows. Um, so I was outnumbered by Hawkeye fans on that. So Shipley put me in a bad situation, and I made a foolish bet. Um, you know, I was so confident in my in my Cyclones. Um, so I have to go on Hot Mess Happy Hour, which is one of our sister our sister uh, place, and I got to wear a Hawkeye shirt. Shipley, mm. ooh, would you like to jump on and ooh? Mm. <laughs> I, I had nothing to do with making you make that bet. Uh, and I was on there too. I was outnumbered too. So, yeah, but you, I was like, yeah. you put him in a vulnerable position, though. Uh, yeah, but Brent <laughs> bailed. Brent was supposed to be on there. He bailed. Listen, so, he'd be, showing up. He'd be saying, they're going to be there and don't be showing up, huh? Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Like every Saturday yeah. Yeah. when I. Uh, like every Saturday when I go to the kolache shop and eat the <laughs> is it is it every Saturday? Because I remember a couple I was sitting in there like where's ship? His ass wasn't there. That's how it goes. You know what I'm saying? No, it's because my wife knew I was leaving. My wife knew I was going over there. I gotta hide it. Uh, I I'm supposed to be on a, to be on a diet. So <laughs> yeah, me too. It's football season. <laughs> I also made another stupid bet. I have a September. Uh, September, I am doing a weight loss challenge with some guys from high school and a, a couple of guys from college. So, we're trying to get down in September. Uh, I'm also doing a bike ride. It's so, September, yeah, for this month. So, I'm down, I'm down five. I'm already down five. Um, but I'm because I'm also doing a charity bike ride. I'm riding 100 miles uh, for children's cancer. So, one of the things is I'm on my road bike. I got my Peloton, but I'm on my road bike and I'm hitting the trail. Uh, I'm trying to get in this, this, um, Hundred miles. I went the first four days of the month and got twenty five in. So I'm already a quarter of the way in. Got seventy five miles to go. I'm gonna hit uh, another twenty five or so this week. But <clears throat> I want everybody to go to Trice Leg or to George Trice's my personal page. Look for that post about the childhood cancer I'm having. Um, a, a benefactor came out. So on Wednesday, all donations we get on Wednesday will be matched up to one point five million dollars. So this is not about the Jack Trice care, the Jack Trice uh, Foundation. This is about the children's cancer. Um, a friend of mine has lost a, a child to children's cancer, and I'm riding for two people, um, Charlie and, and, and Demi. Uh, I'm riding for them. Uh, they're on my back and on my and on my chest for um, for this month. So you know, supporting that children's cancer because it's you know it's just like the wave. We weren't we weren't there at the uh, at Iowa to do the wave this this game. But, you know, those kids, they still are out there. They still need our help. They still need our support. We got to nip this in the bud. So, um, got that out there. But not to bring us down, to bring us back up, we're going to talk about Revelton Distillery. We're going to go to this quick commercial break, talk about our sponsor. Revelton, what you up to? At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot-tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. Thanks, Revelton, for all your support, what you do for us. 
I see nine people out there watching this live. We got eight likes right now. But the wire is quiet. We normally have more uh, more banter on there. Um, we got some guests on here, people. You know, say something. Ask a question. See what they're doing. Oh, we got 10 people out here now watching. So, I'm, Toya, I know you out there. You got something to say. Oh, no, Toya's out in uh, like the Aruba or something like that at a, at a church conference. She out there, you know, enjoying life this week. So, she missed the game. So, I guess she, she chose this uh, for a reason. Uh, but... Uh, you know, as we look at going forward, you know, we we can we can dwell on the past um, of that. But I do want to ask as we wrap up the, the Iowa segment, Todd, Brett, I want to know one of your favorite moments, you know, for one plan. Uh, that's the Seahawk game. You know, any any of your favorite moments from the Seahawk game. And then as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of Jack's death uh, this year, I want to know what your your most memorable moment is playing at Jack Trice. So whoever wants to start, I'll let you do it. Yeah, I'll go. I mean, my for the, the Seahawks game in Curve, you'll remember this one because this is a game I think the defense really dominated. It was the, the game in 2005, right? So they were ranked, I think, eighth in the country. Or they were top ten. They were loaded on defense. Mm -hmm. um, and we just – I think we were we were I don't know how many 10, 14 point underdogs and just I think the final score was like what twenty three to three. Yeah. We just dominated all day. Lamarcus had a pick six. Um, Berryman had a huge day. Fortune fumbles. I mean, it was just one of those days where offensively we just didn't. Our job was just don't screw it up. Unfortunately, we didn't. Uh, you know, we got some points on the board, but uh, that was definitely my favorite day, just because they came in on a high and we just. You know, we just dominated. And to your point, George, they kind of went on and won like ten games. And of course, they didn't play anybody that year. And mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean that 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 was my, you know, that was that was a big win. And then the 07 game was just very forgettable. <laughs> we kicked five field goals and won, but uh, that you know, oh, was yeah. tough. and then talk about that win. win. But it was weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think probably for me, there's a couple things that stand out from playing in Jack Trice Stadium. Um, Nebraska game in 04 and we were all freshmen. Corvette, you were a sophomore. Um, and just winning that game because you know, Nebraska was a big game for our fans. Just because we had, we didn't win right. that game a lot over the years and Big 8 and into the Big 12. So that was a big game. And then uh, I think it was Texas Tech when it was Coach Max last home game. And we were having kind of a tough season. And we were able to win that game and carry him off the field and just kind of ended on a high note for him there. So those, those are the ones that stand out for me. So, yeah, I think that that last game, Coach Max's last game, I think was uh, Missouri, wasn't it? It was Mizzou. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I, as far as the Seahawks series, very similar to Brett. Uh, that 05 game went in 23 to three. Being able to look up on the jumbotron and seeing you know thousands of their fans filing out of the stadium and out of the parking lot, and everybody just waving to the jumbotron um, in, in a game where they're supposed to beat us by by a couple of scores. Um, that was a lot of fun. Again, Brett mentioned our senior year uh, in 07. You know, we beat them, but it was just a weird game to be a part of. We couldn't <laughs> piss a drop on offense, but neither could they, so it was okay. Um, just a lot of field goals, and we made more than they did. Um, and, and and just the playing in Jack Trice as a whole, it's just a, a special, special um, stadium. It's not the biggest stadium. Um, it's not the, you know, the most impressive stadium when you talk about technology and all the new, you know, the biggest jumbotrons and all that stuff. Um, but but what it means to to Iowa State, what it means to our fan base, what it means to the players, uh, you can't even describe it in words. You really can't. Um, it, it's you know you talk about a fan base who has been through um, all the ups, all the downs, probably more downs than ups uh, over the last you know 25, 30 years, and they continue to show up and they continue to support the Cyclones. And, you know, we get on podcasts like this and we complain about the offense and, you know, <laughs> you bitch about special teams. And but what you know, what are we going to do next Saturday? We're going to throw on Cardinal and Gold and we're going to support our Cyclones. And and that's what the fans have done. And they've done it in that stadium for years and years and years. And I think that's why it's you know such a special place. And that's why, you know, just talking about it now and, and any time I get to go up there and, and now with the family, take my son up there and stuff. It's uh, it's goosebump stuff. It really is. That's what's up. Um, other thing is, have you all gone out to uh, ChristLegacy.org to make your minimum of $5 per month um, reoccurring donation to the foundation? Have y'all done that yet? I like it. I um, like I'm, it. This is my I, first I, time I, here. I'm, 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 I'm losing service right now. I'm losing service. He got caught. He got caught. 
Make that everybody listening. So I'm calling you know what? <sighs> Brian Kane, Joe Clement, Paul Nobly, John Christensen, Melissa McCardo, Tana, Tana Bridges, Drew Shipley. Who else on there? Got two more. I'm calling everybody out. We got 19 people watching us now, so I can keep doing this. Um, but hey, if you watch us and hit these <laughs> like buttons, then you know, support us. Um so right now we are down in the series two to five. That's why I was just looking up when my eyes was going the other way. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking to see where we were in the series. So, Marcus, as we finish up this football season, um, the football series, that one's done. As we go into these next Cyhawk games for this series, um, you know, what is your, you know, what is one of your moments in basketball uh, against Iowa? What is one of your favorite moments against Iowa? A favorite? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know about too many favorite ones, but um, it, it's just you know a school that that's always you know for for us, for them, for you know you and I, Drake, whoever. It's always that tough, tough game on the schedule. It's the it's the one that you know, like you said before, like if we beat them, then we have you know pretty much a a subpar or a bad season for the rest of the year. But I'm almost to the fact that. I don't give a damn just as long as we beat them. You know what I mean? So if we lose against them, we have a good year. I'm happy about that. But still at the same time, there's, there's no school uh, on the, on the schedule that I look forward to beating more. Um, it was always a tough, tough game, you know, basketball, football, whatever sport that we're playing against them. So, uh, but I guess, I guess my last year, you know, my junior year where, you know, it was just the house was packed without a doubt. Um, it was so loud in there that you you couldn't hear yourself even think. You know, it, it was just so much wind just blowing from how much noise that was going on in Hilton Magic. And uh, just to be a part of that, to get that W, you know, we, we understand now that, that we are we're adults, but when we don't understand, like, how much of kids we were at that time. And we were just in school and we were student athletes and we were just trying to compete. Um, if we knew the things then that we know now, you know, we probably would have done a lot of things differently. Uh, but like when you think back to that time now, you, you think to yourself, like, I really didn't know nothing what I was doing. I was just, you know, being a student athlete, just just trying to do whatever I could do to help the team win. Um, but when you think about it now and you just sit and you reflect on, um, you know, how tough that that rivalry is and how big that rivalry it is for everyone in the state of Iowa. Um, you're you're always blessed to be a part of it. Yeah. Shipley, before you get on there, Brent. Shipley, this is my show. Stop texting me about what I got questions in the side for. I know I got questions in the side. I'm running the show, Shipley. Oh, yeah. ship, come on. You didn't even know we had an <laughs> I called it. I, I'm the one that say we're doing it every Monday at 8 o'clock. Okay. Okay, that's why you were like, "What? What odds?" Hey, I don't know who you're talking I about. You. I love you, Sydney. <laughs> I love you. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> hey, Curveball, what, what was your uh, what was your favorite moment going back to uh, again playing in Jack Trice um, and and or the Cyhawk uh, series that you were playing in? Uh, I mean, it'd be that the one that uh, Brett brought up that twenty three to three year was. I mean, it was a dominant game by the defense just all around, and we had fun. <laughs> Dudes are flying around. I mean, honestly, damn near every game that year was just fun as hell to be in because our defense was one of the best in the nation that year. So like, yeah. we was, you know, setting the bar high. So, I mean, that year would, would easily be my best memory because I don't have no good memories. I think I got hurt the year before out there, and I never mm -hmm. personally had, like, a good game against Iowa. It's like, okay, so fuck them guys. But, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> outside of that, <laughs> 05 for sure. <laughs> Got you. So we got a question out there that I want to I'm going to take back to last week. Now, Ship, I did not watch the answer to what Coach Max said in uh, regard to how uh, Ja got into that game for the special teams. So Brent Marcus, you know, last week we had Ja Main on there, Billups, and uh, we talked about him in the Inside.com bowl game and a story about how he got in there. So we did kind of the PC version. So I, I do want you to jump on here. Put all six of us on here, Chip. And I want you to tell us a recap of what McCarney said because I want to do that because oh after I do that, I want to make sure that we get to Sam Anchor's question about the favorite or funniest Coach Mac story or memory. 
So oh, I want to do that. How about I just bring up the video? Oh, that's what's up too. Yeah, we got right. yeah, we got to get we got to get everybody on here. I'll get off. Damo gets knocked out of the game. <laughs> he didn't know what town he was in. He didn't know what state he was in. He didn't know what game he was playing in. It was one of those shots that he was really knocked out. We had a backup punt return guy named Adam Runk from Stillwater, Minnesota. That was a tremendous player, great safety, heck of a defensive back, contributed a lot. He flips an ankle the series before we get that punt return. So now it's Jermaine Billups and Mike Woodley. We mentioned the Woodley family a little bit ago. I got Woody in charge of the punt return team. And I said to Woody on the phone, hey, listen, we got our third guy in there. Jermaine's a heck of a player. I trust him. But just take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. He's going to go back and catch the punt. I'm just saying, take care of the ball. That's all I care about. Take care of the ball. So I must have said it about 15 times before they punt the ball. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Jermaine Billups gets it. We get about six, seven phenomenal blocks. He's coming right down our sideline. And next thing I'm screaming is, take it to the house. Take it to the house. <laughs> of, take care of the ball. Instead of take care of the ball, take it to the house. He took it all the way back for a touchdown. And that's one of the big plays in that victory that we got in the first bowl win in 100 years. But he not only was our not our starter, he was not our second. He was our third guy. But <laughs> that's what's up. Love it. So, Love it. You know, we're trying to figure out how the hell Ja got in there. Because it's like, <laughs> Ja, what the hell are you doing? Like, I mean, it's, it's a bowl game. You put on the top <laughs> five, I guess. But, shit, what are, you, what are you doing? So, now, with that in mind, what is y'all favorite Coach Mack story or – um uh, memory. That's tough. Ty, we'll start with you. Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. It's it's tough to pick one. I think it's just honestly, some of it is just his mannerisms that it's not a specific memory. It's something that he does every single day. Um, I mean, putting a Y on the end of every single person's name when he's talking to him, he's like, ah, ah, hey, Pythi, how we doing today? Huh? Uh, yeah. But I mean, that, and just the yeah. way he tells stories, he can't help but give every person that, he, that comes up, he gives them their flowers. He, he mentions Runk for, for, you know, two seconds in that story and yet wants to tell where he's from, how good of a player he was, fantastic safety. And, and you know, he, he sidetracks himself in every story because he talks about how good every single person is. But that's just Mac. <laughs> Like that's truly yeah. just how he is. That's how he how he feels about everybody, and that interaction uh, for that story. That's how it was for you know for me for four years uh, uh, at Iowa State, <laughs> uh, redshirt and the, the the three years playing for him. Like that's how he was all day every day. It's not fake. It's not a performance. It is authentic to him, and it is. I mean, that's the reason I want to go to Iowa State. I, I always people have asked me before, you know, what what made you want to go to Iowa State? And it was Coach McCartney, and it was honestly just the way he talked. He said the word football, and it sounded different when he said it. Uh, and so that's, I mean, that guy right there, still having that energy and that enthusiasm for absolutely everything that he's talking about, is, uh, I mean, that's why I want to be a Cyclone, and that's why, you know, that's uh, that's why Coach Mack is, you know, was like a a dad to all of us, you know, a second father to all of us when we were in school. And that's why he's still one of my favorite people. I mean, Mac, Mac mm -hmm. is the man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Brett, what about you? I echo a lot of what Todd said there. I think just his his loyalty that he has to everyone. And, you know, you could see him, you know, we go now years without seeing him. And when you do, it's like, you you know, you see him every day. And um, for me, like, I, I Iowa State was my only scholarship, so that made it a pretty easy choice. But I don't think I would have went anywhere else, even if I had choices. I really don't. I think the energy that he came with and, and I mean, I don't think people realize how bad, and I mean, maybe we do on this call, but just how bad Iowa State was when he got there. And like, we don't have, I mean, it was such a big deal for us just to get an indoor facility. And I think our second year there, and I mean, our facilities now, I was up around in the locker room on Saturday and I mean, it's just ridiculous. And like, none of that happens without somebody getting it started and he was the one to do it. And, you know, his, you know, his run there was by far, by far the most difficult uh, without question because of what our league was and, you know, how Hayden Fry was at Iowa and they had every resource in the world and he just came in and started from scratch. So, um, but yeah, I think for me, this, like the stories, I used to always crack up when he, because most of the head, they kind of left the quarterbacks alone. But when he would just get on people, I, I would always just cry. I don't know what it was, just watching him get after people. And, uh, you know, I know Curvey's probably going to hate this and Todd, but it was just, we would just sit back in the quarterback room and just 
just kind of have just have a good laugh at how you and you and Coach Fitch and the rest of the quarterbacks were in your oh, safe yeah. area, your safe spot. Yeah. You guys can talk shit about everybody <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah. Hey, quarterback, That's quarterback good. and kickers, don't screw them up. Leave us alone. <laughs> quarterback and kickers, I'm telling you. Um, it. It, it is true what y'all say about about coach. So uh, I saw coach. Uh, last time I saw him in person was at uh, Reggie's Hall of Fame induction. We were all back for that. And I came in. I stayed with the football team. Gene Smith got me there. Um, you know, I knew Coach Mack, and I didn't play. And But he knows everything about you because I was just around there. And he just remembers that stuff. So he brought us some stuff that I had forgot that had happened between me and him, um, you know, 20-some years ago. And that's just the kind of guy he was up uh, was. So it's like when I sent a message to him and said, hey, Coach, you want to jump on a show with me? He's like – he sent me a message before that, like weeks before that, like, hey, I've been hearing y'all show. You've been doing good. Keep it up. I'm like, well, why don't you just get on with us, coach? And he's just like, all right, let's go. And it, that's just the kind of dude he is. He's he's ready at the drop of a dime to support you and what you're doing. <laughs> but like I said, Todd, remembering the little things about people all these years later, and I know he remembers his Iowa people too. He remembers everybody that has played for him or that he really has interacted with on some kind of level. So really good dude. I'm going to tell you so, this, this story. I got a story. Oh, you got a story? I, right. I remember this. We, was, uh, we had a uh, what Coach Matt called dope problem. Remember we had that little dope problem? Yeah, we got called into the old yeah, team. Yeah, everybody was getting drug tested three uh-huh. times a week, <laughs> all winter so, and all spring. <laughs> so, you know, young guy like myself, I hear dope. I instantly go to crack. It, the hard stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking hard <laughs> stuff. Coach Matt's going, you guys are here smoking fucking dope. You think dope is okay? <laughs> like, damn, somebody Everybody's thinking, like, yeah. damn, who is doing that? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We got some dudes that really do that. I was like, that's that's wild. Meanwhile, it was just some weed. I was like, damn. It's <laughs> like, well, well, you gotta have somebody else piss for you so we don't drop that. Time, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, drop that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Coach Mack is probably in his office with the other coaches laughing about the whole situation. Oh. <laughs> that, was exactly, that was classic Coach Mack, too, is absolutely getting a team meeting and ball somebody out for something, just undress them in front of the, the whole team, just chew them out, and then go back uh, into the coach's office, and they'd all be laughing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking balling. Oh, man, that was tough. Uh, so we had one more question out there, and it's going back to you know what we talked about. And it's basically, or I don't we run more RPO or quick pitch to our running backs uh, instead of the instead of the one run up, run handoff of the middle. So what do y'all what do y'all think about that? Is that going? Yeah, I, I didn't what, you, work. what do you think? They're QB. <laughs> I mean, RPOs. That's got to be in your offense. That's just not in our offense. So you got to rep that. You got to rep that a million times to be able to get it down because it's about reading and reacting. Everybody being on the same page, and that's just not been our. That we just don't run that. So, um, I mean, I, I think we have. I mean, this, you know, Coach Campbell and this, they, they've they've cracked the code when it comes to running back and figuring out how to have a respectable run game. I think we got two good ones. I think you know Norton and, and the kid from Southeast Polk. I think both can be special. So we just gotta we gotta be better up front and, and find something that works for us in the run game. But um, I mean, RPOs are, are great and they work for a lot of teams, but. Man, you got to rep those a lot. It's almost like an air raid system where you run like the same five or six plays and just make adjustments off of them. And it's mm-hmm. it's repetition times like you know it's like ten thousand hours kind of thing. So and we got a we really got, it's who, just not in our offense. And, and, yeah, and we got a quarterback who wasn't the starter even in spring ball, right? So I mean, he's getting the late start to even taking snaps with the ones. So to all of a sudden want to put a lot on his plate mentally, um, that's you know that's that's tough. Maybe you know as a junior senior, that's something they can incorporate a little bit, but. It's really tough on a young kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. So um, as we as we look at some things like this, I do want to hit on a couple of things. You know, because this is – we're talking about Iowa State. You know, I always, I'll be remiss if I don't talk about the 100-year anniversary. Um, as we talk about these things this year, um, if you get a chance to, traveling exhibit for Jack Trice at the Ames Public Library brought by the uh, History Museum, check that out. Uh, next Thursday for the lecture series, Ivan, the uh, sculptor of the Breaking Barriers, will be talking on campus at about 2.30. Um, I'm going to have breakfast with him on Friday. Haven't really, uh, I won't be out there from Thursday, but I'll be out there Friday, have breakfast with him, meet him uh, for that. 
um, you know, the commemorative events, the game, things like that. Make sure you're looking at what's going on out there. Uh, support the We Will Collective in their beer, uh, Ames Lager, the We Will Collective, the Legend Beer. There's a lot of stuff going on out there. Um, I still keep talking about one that I thought was going to be out, but it's another special um, release, another uh, exciting new thing that's going to be coming out this week. So we'll talk about it next week, but uh, you'll know when you see it what I'm talking about. Um, but hey, we're supporting these, we're supporting these cyclones and this loss. Looking forward to OU. Um, when when Todd and, and Brett, did we play OU in this kind of this first in the, at your time? Did we play? Did y'all play OU? Did we play Ohio? Um, yeah, how you? I think we did. Yeah, we did. We did. We, did. Yeah. we played about our place, right? Think, yeah, they were at home. Was that 06? Did we play in my senior year? I feel like. Yeah. I think it was my senior year at home was the first time that I remember playing them, like our first game. I think that's have... the only time we did play them. But yeah, I, I know we yeah. played them. Okay. So they got one game yeah, up. I think their... we play out. We play out there. Uh, yeah. Which I think is, um, you were probably going to bring it up, but it's important, I think, because we recruit that area so hard. Mm-hmm. So it's important yeah. to put a good product on the field and show those kids, you know, in a local setting, uh, you know, show them what our program is about because obviously Campbell's got a ton of ties there and, and we recruit Ohio so hard. So I think this is a huge game for us, not just win loss, but also recruiting. Yeah. Cause it's about, it's about a three hour drive from um, Toledo to Athens. So, um, you know, it's mm-hmm. that they're going to be down there showing up for him cause he's a local boy, um, you know, been out there for a long time. So uh, much props to him. Um, and then what's that, what's going to happen with that game out there. So, as we wrap the, the conversation, Marcus, you ain't got a lot to talk about because it's been football, but you got anything you want to talk about? Nah, man, I'm I'm a football fan. Like, like everybody know, our people are starting to understand that football is my, my first love and favorite sport. So anytime I can hear these football guys talk about football, I'm I'm just here taking it all in, you know. Um, you know, just to to be a part of it uh, at Iowa State. Um you know, just talking about Coach Mack a little bit. Like I never played football there. He, he tried to get me out there a couple of times, but I ain't I ain't think he hmm. was really that serious. <laughs> that sounds he like, was. That sounds like he was dead, dead, ass dead serious. serious. I promise if he, you. If he was, <laughs> dead ass well, serious. Well, me, me, and, me, and Big Andy, Andy's uh, Stinsru, we came in together, and so Andy's mm. supposed to play basketball too. So it's kind of like you know, Coach Floyd said, you know. One of these guys are leaving, and it's not going to be Pfizer. <laughs> so Andy went to this thing on the football field, and I stayed on the I stayed on the That was the right floor. choice. <laughs> but but I mean, Coach uh, Mac, you know, I I mean, I was I was a, a skinny scrawny kid coming in. I think I was maybe one ninety eight, two hundred pounds when I first came into college, and um, he got me with you know Coach Getty to you know work out and train. And every time I saw him, you know, he was always good to me. Like you said, the spirits was high and everything like that. And we're talking about 97, 98, 99, when people don't remember K-State and Nebraska and, uh-huh. you know, those teams in the, in, in the Big 12. Like, I remember sitting at, you know, some of the games I was telling Coach Floyd, man, you know, we're in practice. I'm, I'm trying to go over to support the boys, you know, Reggie and the rest of the guys that was on the team. I want to, you know, I want to go and be there and not watch the game from from the dorm. I wanted to to sit there and watch. I hate to say some of those massacres, but they were massacres back then. But still, <laughs> but still, you know, just to to see, you know, how hard and how much work he put into it, and then how those guys got progressively better and started building a program for you know you guys that follow in behind them, and you know it was just just a great thing to be a part of. And I, you know, anytime I see him to this day, I, I totally thank him for allowing me to you know come over to the football facility and get some of that crazy workout and training because it definitely, you know, transformed my game. You know, I, I had – when I first went to Iowa State, you know, my freshman year, I thought everybody on the team was going to the NBA. I mean, just – that's just how much of the level was different to me, you know, being a skinny, scrawny freshman coming into school. And then eventually once I got stronger and put it together with my talent and things like that, I started to, to figure some some things out, and I knew – you know, that the, the football program played a, a major part of it. And deep down inside, in my mind, I was still a football player. You know, I played football in, back when I was a little kid and things like that. But um, I probably should have, you know, took the time to to put some serious thought into it. But, you know, my dad wasn't really letting that happen growing up in Louisiana. But like I said, you know, football is still my favorite sport. 
You know, I watch it more than I watch basketball, believe it or not. And anytime we have guys on the panel that's going to, you know, talk about the experiences and things that they went through, of course, I'm jealous and I'm just taking it all in. <laughs> I think things yeah. worked out okay for you. I think you, I think you probably, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. probably made the right decision. But <laughs> Yeah. And plus, it was good. plus y'all, you guys know how cold it is out there. <laughs> Man, that's why we we're so excited about that indoor that Brett was talking about. All right. <laughs> well, that was um, and, and as we talking about it, you know, y'all saw Purdy come back. You got to talk about Purdy. I got to. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about it because I was. I, I took a picture. His brother is on um on Nebraska, so I saw his brother. Um, you know, I was right behind him. Took a picture of him. Posted it out there on social media. Uh, but he came back yesterday slinging that ball, picked up right where he left off. Um, I was happy to see that with him. Um, in the background, I got that Jets game. So the New York clones out there, uh, Lazard, Hall, and, and Will McDonald out there. Mm-hmm. Um, we see, uh, we saw uh, David Montgomery. He ran that one. He ran that 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 one back too. So he's out there being a beast. So you know, good good job for him out on Detroit. So um, especially they beat Kansas. Uh, they they beat the Kansas City. Chiefs. Yeah. So it's like that was like, whoo, Mahomes was pissed when you look at him on the side. Yeah, he's real pissed. Yeah. Did you see his face? I watching Purdy do this stuff too. I mean, he's, you know, hands down the best quarterback ever to play at Iowa State. He owns every record. I don't think there's any other record. I don't think there's any other record. I don't think there's any other record. Oh, oh my bad, Bray. Oh, Bray, Bray, you're still on here. That's my fault. Yeah, I mean, he, he, had had better, he had better receivers. He had better receivers. <laughs> 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 oh, oh God, I hear no zingers today. I thought I was on one. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you got to get, you got to get, you got to get, you got to get Brock his flowers, man. We've been able to do yeah, and man. you know, they, people making, you know, people kind of clowning and Mr. Relevant, this and that, and he just stayed steady. And, you know, he's, he's going to be, I mean, you look at all the quarterbacks in that draft class and I think he's, he's at or near the top. He's in a great uh-huh. situation and he's steady and he's, he's just, he's a, he's a baller. He gets on the yeah, field. And team captain this, uh, this yeah. Which I mean, there's, there's, you look at some of the, yeah, the personalities on that team, they got some big dogs in there for him to have that kind of command and, and they look to him as a leader. I mean, it says everything about him. So mm-hmm. I'm rooting for him. Yeah. I love seeing the Iowa State guys in the league and, and thriving. It's so good to see. Yeah. I, yep. I called I called it last year. I said I yeah. said Trey, Trey, give give the ball, put the ball in his hand. Of course we were all kind of, you know, skeptical about, you know, him getting injured last year and, and was hoping that he was going to be able to come back. And now we see that he is back in He's doing big things, and I'm looking forward to – you know, we're all looking forward to him having a, a, a great season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, yeah, so I do want to say something. Brandon Thomas be on here, and I'm calling them out. Yeah, I said it with my chest. Hell with Kansas, the whole state, all of them. <laughs> you know, he a KU fan. We don't like him. Uh, Brandon, you my homie. Uh, but do want to talk about, you know, you know, we are brought by Three Beards. We had our, our good guests on here today. Um uh, three beers. We are selling these shirts. So, ship. Can you bring them shirts up? So, these shirts that are for sale, they're in in your in Iowa colors and Iowa State colors. Um, not lady sports. Uh, and also, three beers will be sponsoring a golf hole tomorrow. Uh, for the event for event for women's basketball. So, partner with the We Will Collective. Support them. You can buy your shirt. Um, ship. Can you put that put the website put the web address so we can flash that on the screen. Um, but. You can pick it up in Norwalk or you can get it delivered to you. So, um, you know, whatever your whatever your fancy is, whatever you can do, but support if you can. Um, you know, we we always out here to support everybody, uh, women's sports, men's sports, um, and Iowa State as a whole. We don't want to buy them cyclone ones, but I'm hoping Hot Mess doesn't get me one of those. So you can take that down, ship. Appreciate you. Hopefully, people out there doing it, co-sponsor the whole. Where's uh what uh golf course is that tomorrow, ship? Ames Golf and Country Club. Ames Golf and Country. They didn't email me back. I'm trying to do a uh, charity dinner there. So when you're out there, tell them uh, to holler at me. I'll shoot you the email of the guy that's coordinating this other one. You All right, appreciate it. it. That's what's up. So as we do, we close this out. We talk about what we're doing in our in our daily lives, talk about what we're doing. And, you know, we welcome and, and thank you, Todd and Brett, for being on. Um, and what we do, we like to let y'all close it out. Uh, we're not going to talk after y'all. So I'll let Marcus, any closing words, Marcus, any closing words, Brent, um, and then we'll let Todd and, and Brett kind of close us out. No, the, the guests can have it. 
Yeah, run the show, man. Run the show. Todd, what are we doing in our daily life? What are you doing? Oh, man, just just being an Iowa State fan, being a husband, and being a father. So I got got two little ones at the house, six year old and a three year old, and uh, I got a third on the way. So I got a boy and a girl, yes. and we got a tiebreaker tiebreaker baby coming in uh, next March. <laughs> so I got to prepare and, and remember how to do diapers and all that stuff again. So kind of thought we were done with that, but this one this one snuck up on us a little bit. <laughs> what are you What are you rooting for? You can be honest. <sighs> Honestly. We got we got a boy, we got a girl, so uh, a healthy one. You know, that's like kind of the cliche answer. I mean, I think you want to have another boy. Cool. You want a yeah, boy. Another boy. Want boy. Want I think it'd be a cool age. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, this one, one of the two. Hey, babe. Yeah. Um, hey. <laughs> no, I, think, uh, I think it'd be a cool age. Jace, my older son, when he's in high school, and th- and this one, if it if it does turn out to be a boy, you know, he'll be in elementary, going into like middle school and, and kind of watching his big brother, hopefully play, play sports and stuff. I think that'd be yeah. pretty cool to watch. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, nice. you know, secretly, I, of course, if anybody asks, like, oh, just a healthy baby, but uh, deep down, probably uh, I wouldn't mind another boy. <laughs> so that's yeah, it. I won't even lie. Just yeah. cheering him on and, and being a dad. Yeah, we had, we had two girls and we found out, same situation, we were kind of done and then we had a, a surprise and I, I was hyped when I found out we were having a boy, so. Don't be ashamed. It's all right to root, and root for a boy. But, uh, I mean, same, same thing with Todd. I think it's important for me to note, like, we do this every day. I know, Corvette, you're doing it. Marcus, you got kids. George, it's like, it's, it's just, it ends up being less and less about you. Right. More about trying to just set everyone else up and try to serve as much as you can for your kids. And right. um, that's just what I, that's one thing that just keeps coming back to me every day. So, um, but yeah, I appreciate what you guys are doing. And, um, I mean, that's it. Just trying to to be the best example I can for my kids and just anybody else I cross paths with. Yeah, guys, this was awesome. I appreciate you, uh, you having us on. This is always fun to get on here and chop it up with fellow Cyclones and, you know, talk about the good old days and, and, and be able to have a, a safe space to bitch about uh, the, the current days <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when, we, when we don't show out on a Saturday. So uh, this is fun, man. I'd love to come back. Uh, if we were, if anybody wants to see us back, we're always open to it. I'm sure. Absolutely. We love to have y'all back over. I'll just I'll make a whole pod for you too. You just say the word. <laughs> yeah, we we tried we tried that once and it was hard to coordinate schedules with, with kids and traveling around. And we yeah we we, we on the road there, too so, much but, for that man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what hotel are you in tonight? <laughs> so I'm not going to home, but I leave for I leave LA. I leave for LA tomorrow. So yeah, too much travel for all that. That's what's up. Well, we appreciate y'all, and then. Hey, thanks. We'll see y'all next week.